Meeting started. Um, we're going to call the meeting to order at 8.33. And second item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the previous meeting, November 15th. You should have those. We have something that I don't remember how it was said, but this might be need to be a change. Okay. Um, on under the work session and negotiation, it says once current cadets are sworn in, they will be included in this pay, pay plan. But since cadets no longer a position in here, they'll be recruited. It's the second they're, they're hired, they would be included. Okay, give me just a sec. So once current cadets are hired. We, need we, we currently We're, have an academy class going right. on. So we would just have to change them from cadet what they are now to recruit on the new pay plan. They would also be incorporated into the pay plan. The ones in the academy right now. We're about halfway done. And then going forward, any time one is hired, they just go straight to recruit. What do you recommend me changing that to? Uh, or that cadets are included in this pay plan, I guess might be the easiest way. Because they're not they're not commissioned yet as a peace officer. They're just academy cadets, so they would have to be included in the pay plan. Um, so <clears throat> what Sergeant Bellini said would probably be easier just to include them, even though they're not sworn into the pay plan January first. Okay, so just change it to cadets are included in this pay plan. Okay, okay yes. I can make that edit. I think so. Yeah, just the way that the way that it reads is that. They won't be included in the pay plan until they're sworn in, which is going to be well after January 1st, which... Right. So. Okay. So if I could get a motion with that um, revision. I move, or a motion. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, those pass. And we're going to go ahead and go to item three on the agenda, final review, discussion, and approval of the meet and confer agreement. That was also passed out, and I think Teresa wants to kind of summarize each section. Um, so we'll go through. We'll go through it. Yeah, I would like to do that. I think it's important to, for everybody to know that it's not just about pay. There's a lot of things that are beneficial to the department that are in this agreement. Um, so I'll start on page three. Article one is just definitions to help us all understand what the words mean in this agreement when it's sometimes unclear. An article two, recognition. Um, it recognizes SAPOC as the exclusive agent for negotiations under these agreements, and it accepts from the agreement or excludes the chief of police, the assistant chiefs, um, all police officers in the airport, the city marshal's department, and the fire marshal's office. Um, under hiring process, we set out a new process by which people are hired, but one of the um, significant things in there is we overrode the new statute that removed the maximum age and put it back at 45. So for non-certified officers, 45 is the maximum age at the time of application. There will be an oral board process that includes the chief, training lieutenant or designee, civil service director, a representative from the association, a supervisor, and two officers. Um, for, we're going to allow lateral transfers again. These are commissioned officers from other agencies who want to come to the city of San Angelo. Um, there is a process for them to come into the city. The maximum age for a lateral officer will be age 56. Um, they will receive entry-level base compensation in accordance with the adopted pay schedule. They're not going to be eligible for promotion for four years. And um, the chief of police may require them to successfully complete all or part of our academy. We reinstituted an assessment center for the sergeant and lieutenant positions. Um, 
and we created some eligibility for promotions. Applicants need to have six years as an officer and a minimum of intermediate certification to promote to sergeant, four years in rank of sergeant, and a minimum of advanced certification to promote to lieutenant. Um, Jeremy, you did ask for a change regarding um, that you can still challenge written exam questions. That is part of civil service. It's not something that we're overriding, so I don't think that that is necessary to include in the agreement. <clears throat> then we go over to compensation. This is the article that got a lot of um, attention in the press and other places. And so we do have the compensation. You'll see the pay grade in Appendix I of the agreement. There are two changes we've agreed to this morning. Um, we left off inadvertently the, the lieutenant advanced. That salary will start at 99000 And um, we're going to remove the assistant chiefs from this appendix. That will be in the budget ordinance that goes to council because it's necessary at council. But because assistant chiefs are excluded from this agreement, we're going to remove them from this exhibit for the agreement. Um, no officer, we are, this is um, an, a pay plan that has an emphasis on training versus just years of service. So in case there's an officer who would lose pay as a result of this, we've agreed that no officer is going to lose any compensation under this plan. Everyone will at least stay where they are. Um, and we do agree to include in the proposed budget for 24-25 compensation that's equal to or greater than this compensation plan that's set out in this agreement. In order to get it started a little bit earlier next year, we've agreed to reopen negotiations in January 2024 for the purpose of de development of a compensation plan for the 24-25 fiscal year. And then um, for Article 6, discipline, this was something that was in prior agreements. <coughs> Officers can choose if they are suspended from one to five days. They can choose um, to use vacation or holiday time to serve the suspension with no loss of pay and no break in service. When they do that, then they lose their right to appeal that discipline. Um, they can appeal the suspension either to a hearings examiner if they do not choose to use vacation time in lieu of, time, of um, pay. And then the probationary period, this was something that we talked about at civil service a while back. Um, we've changed the probationary period for police recruits to 18 months from the date of employment as a police officer. Um, probationary officers, which are lateral officers, will have a probationary period of 12 months. We're going to also allow part-time police officers, a maximum of 12 T. Cole certified officers who've honorably separated as full-time Texas peace officers with minimum five years experience. They'll receive a rate of $32 per hour worked, um, but they may not work more than 999 hours in a calendar year to ensure they're still um, part-time. They will also be available if the police chief agrees for off-duty law enforcement employment. Um, can I ask a question or mm -hmm. recommend an in entry into that on section four? Do you think it's necessary to add a statement that says that off-duty assignment jobs will not count towards that overall hour shift in that calendar year? Because the, if a part-time officer is working, they're still going to have to have legal coverage through our associations in, in the event of a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. So um, They receive a different rate of pay for off-duty assignments. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. is, are they considered working as city employees? Are they paid through our payroll system? No. Paid no. directly no. by the hiring organization? But most of the time, it's, a lot of the events we work is on city property which is a requirement for off-duty jobs for like Fort Concho, the convention center, stuff like that. I, I think we might have instituted the 999 hour limit based on limitations for TMRS. That's correct. So okay. that's the only thing. We don't want anything to interfere with their TMRS. Okay. Good. So the language is okay as it is <clears throat> I, since we're not paying them? I think we want to make sure that they, yes, it's okay. 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 All right, and then the miscellaneous things of as a complete agreement, um, we're preempting anything in civil service or the commission or any other statute that might conflict with these um, provisions. And the duration of the agreement, it's going to become effective January 1st, 2024, and it will continue through December 31st, 2024, unless it's extended by mutual agreement. I had one, uh, a little bit of discussion for Article 5 on compensation. Uh, I provided an example of a memo, which I can clean up and send to you at a later time, for officers to report their change in TCOL license. 
uh, it would be routed through police administration and but on it, we wanted something in the contract to protect the city on that the, when the officer re reports their status change the city is not responsible for back pay with the exception of the current pay period that the change is reported and um, that way somebody can't come back six months later and expect a, a large check to in back pay so maybe add that to section 2 D what do you want it to say Just, I mean however it needs to be stated but basically that when an officer has a change in license status it's his response his or her responsibility to report that to the police administration through a memo uh, and that the city is not responsible for any back pay except for the pay period that it's reported I did want to point out that um, we talked about last time that um, for the period of October 1st through December 31st, we're going to issue a stipend to all officers. However, many officers are employed and covered by the agreement on January 1st, 2024. The amount of that stipend is going to be $315,829 divided by that number of employees. That's also in the agreement. We take a brief caucus real quick. Well, I'm going to do that. I can go up and make these changes and bring it back. Okay. Thank you. No you problem. think you're going to have another change? Well, just give us like, give us like two minutes. Okay. So we'll caucus at 845. Okay. We'll call the meeting back to order at 849. Uh, just back on the, um, that clause about the officer reporting the change in status and the city not being responsible for back pay. Uh, just to clarify that the city would not be responsible for back pay for like if the officer waited a couple months to turn in the report but whenever it's dated even if it takes two pay periods to kick in it would be effective when it was dated during that pay period is that okay, okay. we just wanted to make sure that's fine now is is there an additional document like a certificate or something that has an official date other than the form you're going to have them yes. fill out yeah, it, it's called a personal status report, a PSR, that we, they can print off from T. Cole. Okay, and so, so that'll on, be on this attached. memo that I had, it says attaches a copy of my PSR to show that documentation. And it would be under the awards section, and it would have the, the license and the date it was issued. Okay, so we will go by that date. Well, yes, but if they wait three months to turn it in, mm -hmm. y'all aren't responsible, with the exception of the pay period they turn it in. If I, I would say the date it's received by administration. It's put in the box and received. And will they mark it received? We can make we can make sure, Something, or I mean, or it can go off the date morning. the officer submits it. Yeah, the date. Uh, I mean, it's I on. think that I think the date of MO would be the way we would want to do that because it's right there. Because sometimes stuff gets lost in our mail, but if it's the date of MO. I don't foresee this being a big issue, I, but we thought that we should have something there just in case. So, so we'll go by the date it's submitted by the officer? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. I mean, we have one more change on B and under compensation. We're going to change the wording a little bit to say signing stipend in the amount equal to $315,829 inclusive of taxes and benefits, and they remove that last sentence just to make sure it's more clear that that we're going to take taxes and benefits out of that stipend. So, do y'all have any other changes? So if we could caucus again and one of you guys or more of you guys come up with me so we can work on language for this section D get some agreement before we bring it back that would be good so we'll caucus at 851 okay so we'll get the meeting started again at 9 16. okay so we went upstairs and agreed upon some language on article 5 compensation on page 10 we modified b to read in addition to the compensation set out on appendix 
I, each member of SAPD covered by this agreement, shall be entitled to a signing stipend in the amount equal to $315,829, inclusive of taxes and benefits divided by the number of officers covered by the agreement and employed on SAPD on January 1st, 2024. Um, D, we added a D under that section that reads, it shall be the officer's responsibility to report the status of license change to police administration on a form agreed upon by police administration and human resources. The city is not responsible for payment of back pay for the delinquent reporting of the change in status. Compensation will be increased beginning the pay period that the report is submitted to police administration. And then on the um, appendix that deals with the uh, pay plan that outlines the pay plan, we added Lieutenant Advanced of $99,000 and removed the Assistant Chief from the attachment. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know that we need it, but I'll make a motion we accept those changes as typed, if, if that's what we need, because that's what we agreed on. So do we need that? And it, yeah, we'll need a second. Okay. Second. I'll vote. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just go down and vote. No, no, so we'll just call the vote and we can all say aye. Oh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the agreement passes. I think so. So we need you guys to sign the tentative agreement. We'll make copies for you so you can take them. And then we're also going to put it on the city website under the human resources tab. Yes. Okay. Um, obviously with the understanding that there still has to be a vote from your association members, which will occur this week. Well, we will begin the voting process tomorrow. The voting will run from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of this week. And we will tally the votes as soon as the poll closes Thursday. Okay. So the agreement does read also the TA that it shall be presented to the San Angelo Coalition of Police and the San Angelo City Council prior to final adoption of the new agreement at a public meeting held in accordance with the Open Meetings Act. So I do have a placeholder on the city council agenda for, I believe it's the 5th. Let me make sure that's a council date. Yes, for the 5th. Um, so then, you know, we'll, we'll get together and make sure that we've got everything ready in terms of a presentation okay. and things like that. ordinance. We can use the emergency exception, but since we have time not to do that, my preference is we go ahead and to do two readings of the budget ordinance. So there'll be the first reading when we accept the agreement, and then the second reading that following meeting on the 19th. Okay. Okay. I think that's it. Um, we are four on the agenda is to adjourn. So if I could get a motion to adjourn. A motion. Oh, hold on. I think... Very good. If okay. I could get a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.